This USA Heavy tank is one of the most annoying tanks to play against, because T-34 is designed to be difficult to destroy and dangerous to others at the same time. In this video, I will review all tanks' offensive, defensive and other features and answer the question why is T-34 so intimidating when met on a battlefield. First of all, firepower. The tank has 120mm cannon, which is quite big for its 6.7 battle rating, and there are three shell types that can be fired from that big gun. First of them, available even for stock vehicle, is solid armor piercing round. When using it against light tanks, I have no complaints. All I had to do was to hit the center of the vehicle, and 22kg shell goes through, damaging everything around its path usually when shotting the opponent. But when fighting more protected tanks, it's not so simple. Shell's penetration is not bad, but when fighting against most medium or especially heavy tanks, in order to penetrate their armor I still had to aim for weak spots. And weak spots usually are not at the center of the vehicle, so it's way harder to knock out all crew members at once, which often allows the opponent to survive and disengage. Another type of round, APCR, is researchable and also has the same problems. Despite it has around 20mm more penetration, which is less than 10% increase, you would still need to aim for weak spots. Additionally, this round deals even less post-penetration damage because it's smaller. So I don't see the point of using APCR at all. I was always using armor piercing round that has more post penetration damage to have bigger chance to one shot the opponent rather than a negligible increase in penetration. Both of these rounds have no explosive filler, but it's not a bad thing on its own. The main firepower problem of T 34 is that in addition to these rounds' little damage, it has a relatively long reload which doesn't allow you to finish the opponent with a follow-up shot. With a screw, the cannon is reloaded in almost 15 seconds. That is one of the longest reloads amongst most tanks you will be facing. Only Soviet heavies reload a bit longer, but they don't need to worry about the opponent surviving the penetration. In the case of this tank, both lack of post-penetration damage and long reload gives enough time for the opponent to replace the knocked out driver and run away, or if you are more unlucky, replace gunner and shoot back. And the last type of round is high explosive. I never used it because long cannons reload makes switching between ammunition types impractical and it has a relatively small amount of explosives, so the round is only effective against very light vehicles. For majority of such light vehicles you don't even need the main cannon, because this tank has 3 machine guns, 2 coaxial, 1 on top, and all of them are high caliber, so a stream of bullets quickly destroys every vehicle they can penetrate. Furthermore, with this tank I had fair amount of air kills, I wasn't intentionally trying to steal job from SPAAs, but every time when I'm waiting for main cannon to reload or driving from respawn I paid attention to the sky and fired the machine guns if I saw the chance, which appeared to be more effective than I expected. Unlike SPAAs, in this heavy tank you don't need to worry about planes machine guns. In fact, you don't need to worry about some tank's cannons either since T-34 is known for its armor, especially the gun mantlet that is at least 200mm thick. There are various additional elements that overlap and couple of hidden plates even deeper, which allows the tank to completely resist weaker guns or at least absorb the post-penetration damage they create. What I like the most about the armor of this tank is how conveniently it is placed where it is needed the most. You are most likely to be hit into the turret, so the turret has good armor all around. And you are most likely to be hit in front, so both turret and hull have the thickest armor plates in front. This allows the vehicle to have good armor without becoming too heavy and sacrificing too much mobility. 
Just like all heavy tanks, T-34's ability to resist incoming rounds is very dependent on the opponent's battle rating. When up tiered, you will meet opponents with more powerful guns or missiles that can penetrate a couple of times more armor than this tank has. But it's not as bad as it sounds because it can be very hard to destroy T-34 even if the opponent can penetrate it. Because the crew members are spread very well inside a quite a big tank. There are six of them at different sides of the hull and different heights. By the way, how do you call a commander that is positioned higher than everyone else? Come above? As a general rule, APHE rounds that could one-shot this tank cannot penetrate it, and various missiles and heat rounds, despite being able to penetrate, don't have enough post-penetration damage. So the survivability of T-34 is great. When it comes to mobility, this vehicle, as expected for heavy tanks, is relatively slow. The maximum speed is only 35 kph. But as mentioned before, because of smart armor placement, it's not too heavy so it can accelerate pretty well. You will be able to reach its maximum speed quite fast, even off-roads, on snow and sand maps, as long as you move on a flat terrain in a straight line. Reverse is good, 13 kph. That was useful because I was reversing quite often. A long cannon's reload gives enough time to drive back and completely hide behind cover until I am able to shoot again. In general, compared to heavy tanks in other nations, T-34 can move in a straight line relatively fast, but struggles if you need to maneuver. When it comes to playing defensively in the held down position, this tank is good. Cannon's depression of 10 degrees allows you to aim down from over the hill, while a thick turret's armor absorbs incoming rounds. The only way to get killed this way is ammo rack detonation or after multiple penetrations when you eventually run out of crew members. In arcade, the first thing you'll notice is that there are a lot of heavy tanks and almost no light tanks. So no more easy one-shots by aiming at the center of a tank, since you will need to aim for weak spots most of the time. That results in having to shoot the same opponent multiple times in order to destroy it, or what's more likely, getting an assist before you even finish loading another round. Also, T-34 has higher battle rating in Arcade, 7.0 so you will meet more opponents that are able to penetrate your armor. Additionally, aiming cross is helping them to find your weak spots, so tank's armor becomes less effective in arcade. On a good note, T-34 becomes more mobile and feels more like a medium tank with good armor. But this applies to all heavy tanks anyway, including those in the opponent team. So in general, the tank becomes slightly worse in arcade, as issues with post-penetration damage become more prominent. T-34 is a tank with amazing survivability no matter what kind of opponents you are fighting against. It's totally normal to be critically damaged and still survive, because it sometimes takes so long for opponents to destroy T-34 completely that your allies have enough time to come and save you. That's why it's so intimidating to fight against this tank. There is a high probability that someone will kill the attacker itself before it has enough time to kill the T-34. At the same time, this tank lacks post-penetration damage and has a long reload, so it takes a while to destroy something as well. This tank kills slowly, but dies even slower. I would rate this tank 5.5 and a half additional armor plates on the back of a turret out of 10. It's great for people who like slow defensive gameplay, especially when hiding behind a hill, but still want to have enough mobility and survivability to be able to push forward and fight for capture points when needed.